Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. Today I'm going to be doing a video about networking. Um, I've done a bunch of videos about home networking in the past and to my surprise, uh, they've actually proven to be the most popular of the video content I've shared here on YouTube. A specific really, really dry video about how to set up dual WAN networking on a TP-Link load balancer has ended up being my top uh, most viewed video. Uh, so I guess that's what people come to YouTube for, very specific information. Um, finally, after years of dealing with very, very bad home internet with about a two uh, Mbps upload speed, and uh, having to sort of coordinate my YouTube uploads with uh, when my wife wasn't using the internet because we couldn't upload and download at the same time. The bandwidth was garbage, the speed was garbage, and I spent a lot of time rigging up this insanely elaborate home internet setup with cellular, cellular, but I bought a cellular router, I had the ISP, I put them into a load balancer, I had automatic failover so that if the lousy internet connection went down, we'd at least have something, a lousy cellular thing, but it didn't really fix the issue because although I managed to basically obliterate downtime by having my two connection router, I was I still had A or B lousy internet. Um, so fiber finally came along um, after waiting for it. They began putting down fiber here in Israel a few years ago. Um, they said like last year, they'd have half the country done by year end. And the various ISPs here in Israel have these little sort of checking utilities. You put in your address and it says, hey, fiber is available or sorry, there's no fiber yet. So I was trying this I, literally every two months for the past year. ISP by ISP, checking the lookup tools, waiting to pounce the moment fiber was there. I don't know what possessed me to check a few days ago, but I did, and it, it finally said there was there was fiber. So I didn't waste any time. I uh, called them back the next day, the ISP. They sent out a guy two days later. They connected fiber into my office where I do these videos, and um, I couldn't believe it. I was getting 100, 100 internet. Uh, download speed of 92, which didn't really excite me because I don't really know why a super high download speed makes a big difference to your network, but the upload speed was 100. And that to me was internet nirvana. After spending the best part of three years dealing with a two Mbps upload speed, horrible bandwidth, as I mentioned, being able to push videos up to YouTube in minutes instead of hours was like magical. So I posted a screenshot onto my Facebook feed telling my friends who, who've heard about my internet dilemma, why wow, I got fiber, look at this, it's amazing. And uh, what, I got, what I started getting back was comments being like, I think there's something wrong. You should be getting like much faster uh, download speed than 92. You should be getting more like 900 or something. So uh, after the initial excitement, I was like, okay, well, I guess if I'm paying for a lot better, I should probably see whether it's just like my connection or whether there actually is something wrong on my network. So I went through the kind of various diagnostic procedure of thinking, assuming there is a gigabit internet connection coming in, why am I only getting 92 on my desktop? I use day to day for my computing, a desktop computer. It's running Ubuntu Linux um, and it's connected by ethernet into the router. So there's kind of very limited explanations for why gigabit internet could be turning into 100 Mbps internet and I went through those one by one firstly starting with the networking card the NIC the network interface controller does that have a gigabit port now if you have this is what I discovered with a little bit of help from the good people on reddit unless your computer is like 10 years old even more it's probably got gigabit there, there's three three speeds of ethernet port you're going to encounter on any halfway modern computer one of those is 100 mbps that that means the port can support up to 100 mbps the next one is 1000 mbps also called gigabit right 1000 giga um that's the gigabit internet which is kind of standard now in most um reasonably developed uh you know parts of the world which has the infrastructure to support it. And finally, you've got 10 Gbps. Now, I'm sure there is probably Ethernet ports made with even higher throughput than 10 Gbps, but that's already like an insanely fast 
level of throughput. So those are the three possibilities. So I checked off my network card. Yep, it's got um, it's got the speed. I checked off that the uh, Ethernet interface was set up correctly on my operating system on Ubuntu. That was set up correctly. Checked the cable, and it seemed to be fine. Now I, it was Cat Five E cabling. Um, and I put that into Google and it said both cat 5e e and cat 6 can handle speeds of up to 1000 mbps So I think it was a bad cable, but I, this is the, the spoiler alert So I spent about two hours on the phone today to my ISP Saying what's the story they confirmed that I was getting Far worse speeds than I should be getting and we went through the diagnostic together Spoiler alert, uh, it was basically a cable that even though it was Cat 5e e and that to me still looks like it should support gigabit, um, I have a huge bag of, well, a big bag of Ethernet cables that I've built up over the years just by, you know, uh, installing networks and that kind of thing. And I went through it and I said, well, let, let's find a Cat 6 cable in here. So I pulled out one cable and I said, oh, great, this is a Cat 6. So just when I was about to give up hope, I said, let's just try connecting directly from the router to my computer using this cat6 cable put it in the ethernet port went on to ookla speed test and boom my 90 mbps connection was 950 mbps the answer was the cable so again whether that's a bum cable or um maybe there is some fine print uh, certain types of cat 5e cables but uh there's no reason if you are buying ethernet cable today it would make sense to get the fastest cat cable. I don't know what the fastest cat of Ethernet cable is. I know there's cat seven. I don't know if cat eight Ethernet cable is on the market yet, but whatever. Whenever you're watching this video, get the latest Ethernet cable. Um, and it's going to be obviously backward compatible with slower network speeds, but earlier iterations of Ethernet cable may not be. Anyway, what I thought I'd do was, having solved this issue, I thought I would put together a video. Uh, like the one I'm doing, and just kind of diagram out what could be going wrong if you're running into this issue yourself. I'm going to make myself just a little bit uh, smaller here. So here's a network diagram of how my network is set up. Now this is only for the purpose of um, illustration, and I don't mean to insult anyone's intelligence. I thought I was reasonably good at networking before this, but just to kind of show the steps that I went through and that could be affecting your internet. So my internet goes a bit like this. I have a router here. I mentioned that my desktop uh, computer is uh, connected. So I have my desktop over here and I'm using uh, ethernet cabling. Uh, I'm just gonna use a line to depict the ethernet cabling. Um, and I have ethernet cabling going from one direct to the other. I also have a switch on my network. And if you have a home network, you might have a switch, an Ethernet switch here. The router connects to the Ethernet switch. I'm just going to get that lined off there. And then I also have a, this is all, these are all the kind of Ethernet devices on my network. I have a, um, I'm struggling a little bit with the diagramming software here. I have an access point here. I have a network attached storage for all my video stuff and NES. This is here and these guys are connected via the switch, right? And then obviously we also have um, wireless clients. Let's just say Wi-Fi client, uh, let's just say laptop for instance, right? And they are connecting over Wi-Fi via the access point. Now this might be perhaps more complicated than some home networks, but I think it provides a good illustration of if you are getting slower speeds anywhere in the network, uh, what could the issue be? So this router is actually router, let's just be accurate here, router slash modem. Now, when you're dealing with home networking, the speed that you get on from the uh, outside WAN, from the network, from your ISP's network, right that's coming into whatever point your connection gets to now if your isp has supplied you with a router modem as is pretty common it's reasonably safe to assume almost certainly safe to assume they have given you one capable of supporting the max speed 
that the connection is capable of delivering of delivering right so let's call it router speed speed equals x now the reason i'm doing that is because this is the maximum speed right x is our maximum speed the it's not possible for any of the any of the clients on this network whether you're talking about the nas or the laptop or the desktop computer i'm just going to give it a name here for the sake of thoroughness of my diagram it's not possible for any of these guys to have a faster connection upload or download faster than x there are a couple of you know uh very very niche exceptions to that rule the only one that i can think of currently is connection bonding like maybe your desktop is connected via the router but it's also got you know something like um it, let's say you've got two ethernet you've got an nac in your computer with two ethernet cards and you've got um isp2 piping into it as well and you're bonding up those two connections with something like speedify right that's a very very niche thing that i was exploring when my network was bad and suffice to say that the vast majority of people aren't doing stuff like that so in the 99 percent of cases you're not doing strange stuff like connection bonding on your network x the maximum speed or the speed that your isp is delivering uh into your house that's going to be the maximum connection speed we can expect no matter whether we're talking about wireless or wired connected devices now i call these uh speed bumps right and this is i don't think it's an official networking term it's just kind of the term i've come to do uh, i've come to use because i think it's logical and the purpose of this diagram and sort of this video is to just explain all the speed bumps that are possible here so as we said speed equals x now on my case the desktop it was directly connected to the router modem so the only speed bump we have here is the cabling itself right in this case as i explained it turned out to be a bad cable but perhaps it's just a variant of cat5 i'm not really sure that's something that can be slowing down your network so technically your first um port of call really if you're trying to diagnose these issues is to make sure that all the cables are uh capable of supporting the throughput now this isn't intended to insult anyone's in intelligence uh because i was struggling with this as well you can't if you have something that's going to slow down the network connectivity that's that's going to cause not just a speed bump but a speed block in other words let's say your cable was i don't know cat3 or something right just just for argument's sake so we come in with our gigabit connection to our house but then we have this cat3 cable which has a top speed of i think 100 um 100 MB, mbps sorry it's actually cat3 is only 10 okay so max speed equals 10 mbps that means that this desktop computer is only going to be getting maximum uh 10 mega 10 mbps in both upload and download now let's say you have for for argument's sake something you know connected to your desktop or if this was a switch once the internet speed has been slowed down on the network by what i call a speed bump whether that's a cable a switch or uh, hardware inside the device you can't that's it you're finished anything connected downstream of that you're not going to be able to magically make up the missing in this case you know 980 mbps right so once it's slowed down anything downstream at that point is going to be uh slowed down so your first speed bump on speed bump as i call them on your network is going to be the cabling now let's just continue with the with the computer let's say there wasn't that cat3 cabling which is providing that speed bump the cable was i'm just going to write it down here okay um cat6 cabling so now we know that okay the isp is coming in at let's say isp1 gigabit okay from the outside it's going into our router modem cat6 cabling we're good we support up to gigabit so we should be able to get all of the connection out of that and then in the desktop we have another potential speed bump and the speed bump here is going to be the network the nic the network card if your network card doesn't support uh isn't a gigabit uh network card then you're not going to be able to get gigabit internet now as i mentioned 
if you've bought your computer in the last it's a very very it would be very very unusual that if your computer had an ethernet port whether that was on the motherboard or on a network card that it wouldn't support um a gigabit it's almost certainly can but you know you you might be in this your version of the scenario might be that you're dealing with 10 gigabit internet and the speed bumps actually because it's only a gigabit NIC. So that's the second common speed bump on the network. So we covered cabling, we covered the network interface card, and this goes for all the hardware. If you can check what the and you have to, it's you know it's a good idea to check component by component. What is the RJ45 jack on your NES designed to support in terms of max throughput? Is that greater than or equal to speed equals X? Okay, um, the second one that you can run into is the switch, okay? So the switch, switches exist with different throughputs on the port. You can have, I'm sure they're out there in the wild, really old 10 Mbps switches. But the, you know, again, the kind of likelihood is that your switch is going to be either rated up to 100 Mbps, 1000 or... 10,000 which is 10 giga right so 100 MB mbps giga or 10 giga and again this can this can be a speed bump on the network so we're coming in here with our gigabit internet we're going into the router we're going out assuming that we're dealing with cat 6 or above cabling here and then we're coming into the switch now this switch in our in the case of our gigabit example needs to either be a 1000 capable switch or a 10 or a gigabit or a 10 gigabit internet switch if this is only a 100 mbps capable switch we're going to have another speed bump and in this case the nas and the access point which are connected after the switch would be capped at 100 right so we'd have my problem with the desktop would be the problem on the nas we could measure the speed the nas is guessing is getting and we would have gigabit internet here, but the NES might only, let's say the switch here is 100, just for argument's sake, right? The NES is probably gonna be getting a 1990 connection because it can't, the gigabit connection has been slowed down at the switch because it's lost basically 90% of its speed. Uh, and that's a very credible scenario. Now just continue with this example. In this example here, where we have the switch, which is 100 Mbps, the access point is also after the speed bump, right? The speed bump here, I'm just going to give it a color if I can. Um, just give it, I guess, a red color because it's slowing down, right? So this is the speed bump in our network here. The NES and the access point are both after the speed bump, and the Wi-Fi client is, a is, after this, is after the speed bump too. So the access point here is going to have now max equals 100 mbps and therefore a wi-fi that connects to the access point is going to have 100 mbps minus x now the reason i say minus x is you're almost always going to lose a small bit of speed when you're connecting over wi-fi because of network interference because of just the way the apartment's built with concrete walls so and that's kind of unavoidable even if you had a switch that was 1000 we're going to be expecting our wireless clients to get a little bit less than what we're getting from our wired from our wired clients in this case the desktop and the nas so i think i'm going to stop here i think that's a done a hopefully a decent job at sort of outlining all the ways in which uh, a network can be slowed down by what i call speed bumps to reiterate those can be the cables on the network all the switches on the network and the networking cards in all the end devices and probably a lot more stuff. You might have a load balancer on the router. You might have a firewall on the router. Everything, right? It all has to be, it's a chain. Everything has to be, if you want to avail of the full speed of your connection, at capable of throughput, at or greater than the connection coming into your home from the internet service provider. And if any of those uh, things are not the case, you can... That speed bump can lose you literally 90% of your speed. I uh, hope that video was uh, useful. Uh, if you are doing your own home networking and uh, you've just upgraded to fiber internet and you're getting this mysterious problem like I had that one of your clients is only getting a 100 Mbps connection. Worth plotting it on a network, your diagram, everything you have on the network, everything in the chain between uh, your end client and the modem go through everything component by component 
checking the network card, check the OS, et cetera, check cable by cable. They're all either um, supporting the CAT you need or above. You might want to actually test the cables because they might be a bad cable, try swapping out for a different cable. And that way you'll eventually get to the bottom of uh, what is slowing, what is causing the slowdown in your network and hopefully be able to either, you know, replace or upgrade the infrastructure. I just bought two new ethernet switches today uh, that are 1000 mbps capable so that the stuff connected to my ethernet switch the nas and the access point aren't getting uh, slowed down by this speed bump as i call them hope that video was useful thanks for watching if you want to get more videos from me do consider subscribing to this youtube channel